What are the major problems to a purely naturalistic explanation of the origin of life? Well, for a long time, people have wondered about the origin of life. In the 19th century, many scientists thought that life, the cell, the basis of life, was so simple that it could spontaneously form from ocean mud. And um, that seems silly to us now, but to the science of, of that day, uh, that was a good guess, but turns out not to have been true. And along with uh, the work of Louis Pasteur, which disproved spontaneous generation, um, and the growing awareness that the cell was a very complex machine, uh, theories about the origin of life kind of faded away. And they revived uh, pretty strongly in the 1950s when Stanley Miller, a young graduate student, did a chemical experiment where he exposed some gases to an electrical uh, discharge and showed that amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, uh, were one of the products of the reaction. And many scientists became excited at that time because they thought, well, maybe these amino acids could spontaneously form into proteins and maybe DNA could be formed in the same manner and maybe the protein and DNA could get together and, and pretty soon you'd have a living cell. Well, it uh, turns out that with uh, the progress, and many of these ideas were put to a scientific test, and the tests have shown that the origin of life is much, much more difficult than Stanley Miller envisioned at the time, although he, he is a, a very honest man and, and will forthrightly admit to the, to the problems and, and has done so in, in a number of interviews. Uh, the problem is not simply how do we get the the precursors to life. It's how do we assemble them into coherent and working uh, machinery. Let me give you a, a little analogy. Uh, if you think of the, wor of the uh, works of Shakespeare, uh, Romeo and Juliet or something, um, and uh, a, somebody over in, in the corner of the room uh, raises his hands and shouts Eureka and says, I've just found that if you throw ink against the wall, it makes a little letter A, and sometimes it makes something that looks like an S. And I'm on my way to explaining how Romeo and Juliet was written. Well, you can see the problem that it's not getting the A and getting the S and so on, but it's putting them together into words and coherent sentences and paragraphs and, and more. Uh, so uh, it has been shown that nobody, no one, has been able to even come close to explaining how that information uh, could have been uh, put into living systems. As a matter of fact, even the, the chemical production of the precursors that Stanley Miller, uh, his experiment was thought to have solved, turns out to have run into unexpected problems. The, the atmosphere uh, that scientists think was around on the early Earth is not the same as Stanley Miller assumed and the precursors would not form under these different conditions that scientists now think predominated. And the production of other things besides proteins like DNA and RNA is horrendously complicated chemically. And essentially when you put an electric spark in a, a mixture of chemicals, you, you get goop, most of which precipitates out of solution and you get sludge on the bottom of the test tube. Uh, and Many scientists uh, a lot, will quite, quite uh, easily admit that science does not have any idea how life could have originated on Earth. And many more scientists then will admit that Darwinism is incapable of explaining life. Uh, they much more freely admit the problems of, of the chemical origin of life.